My machine learning prof said something super interesting in class yesterday, and I want to share it with you. He said, if you want to remain relevant in the next five years, you need to know AI. And that kind of took me off guard at first. When he first said it, honestly, it kind of annoyed me. I said, that's ridiculous. It's yes, it's important. Yes, it's growing. But the main, like if you want to stay relevant, you need to know it. That seems extreme. He went on to explain exactly what he meant more so behind the scenes, meaning no, you don't need to be an expert in the field. You don't even need to be technical in the field. Field, but being aware of it, having an understanding of what is going on will keep you relevant. And I do believe that. I agree with that full heartedly. Which brings up the next question. How do you keep up with AI? How do you learn about machine learning, especially nowadays when everywhere you look, everyone is talking about it. There are so many resources. You just want to build something. And that is what we are going to go through today. Today, I'm going to share with you how exactly you can start building using data, using Python, and analyzing this data with the help of AI. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take unique data from Bright Data, which I've built with Bright Data in the past. I'll link my previous videos down below. I absolutely love them. I've been using their product for, well, years now. And they recently released data sets. These are predefined data sets that you can use. They're already ready to go. So you don't need to go in and do any web scraping. With this data set, mind you, I should share with you about what data set I chose. I chose the data set of real estate, specifically Zillow's real estate data for homes in LA. Yeah, because I'm moving to LA. You heard that right. Moving to LA, quit my job, becoming a full-time YouTuber. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm doing none of the above. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm staying here in Canada, still working full-time and doing way too much on the side, but that's okay. I love you all. Point being though, is we are taking this real estate data and going to analyze it with ChatGPT. From there, I'm going to share with you some really cool tricks and ways that you can create graphs in ChatGPT, but better yet, see what Python code was utilized to create these graphs. So then you can learn at a faster rate about Python, about how it works behind the scenes. So you can then take this code, take your learnings and go and build your own machine learning algorithms and applications. And if you want to follow along to this, I linked Bright Data down below. So make sure to go sign up, download some data and get started. All right, speaking of let's get started, enough talking, let's get into it. I'm taking you to my dining room table because I still don't have my, my camera stand here. All right, you can see here I have open Bright Data. And as I mentioned, I will link down below some other videos I've done in the past with Bright Data. I absolutely love to use them. And as I am taking this AI and machine learning course, I feel like, I don't feel like I am going to be using them a lot more frequently as well. So let's go through uh, what exactly are data sets that you can have access to. So you can see here there are different categories. So from B2B data, e-commerce, real estate, which we are going to dive into today, et cetera. Now this is such a great way if you are building your own application from scratch, maybe you're learning about machine learning, maybe learning about machine learning, you get what I'm saying. Or you are part of a company and you are looking for existing data. This is a great way that you don't have to go out and uh, utilize a web scraper, but it already exists for you, which is huge. And for me, I'm going to utilize this a lot more as I am building out machine learning applications and really needing data to work with. So it's a win-win, whether you are using it for your own project or your business. All right. It's not for me talking about that. But what I did is I chose to use real estate data because as I said earlier, I'm moving to LA, becoming a full-time YouTuber and taking you with me there. I'm just kidding. You know my sense of humor by now. All right, so let's go here into my data sets. You can see here, I have a few data sets of Zillow. I'm going to be working with a smaller one right now just because I wanted to get very specific in this data set. And now I wanna show you something if I go into here, something really cool, especially different ways you can work with this data. So one thing, as you can see, I've set up beforehand is to use Google Cloud Storage and you can access your data through that way. This is a really great way, especially if you're working with large data sets and want to call um, different APIs for this data. Now there's Amazon S3, there is uh, Snowflake. I mean, the, it really ranges to all the popular delivery settings, which is great. In this way though, we, you know us, we always like to do it a little bit more spicy. So we are going to download this uh, CSV file here. And this is pretty quick to download, but while it's downloading, I'm not wearing a watch. Let's insert some programming jokes here or some text humor. All right. It is downloaded, let's continue on. All right, you can see here now I am in ChatGPT and I've uploaded the CSV file of our data. 
Now, let's start with a very simple prompt before we get into how we can really utilize this to create graphs and also to see what's going on behind the scenes with the Python code. So let's just start with summarize this data for me. And this is just to get familiar with what, how ChatGPT essentially is feeling about the data and what's kind of going on there. This is a very basic prompt. Now we're analyzing. All right, so you can see here, I got this answer very detailed actually, considering there is over 8,000 entries of data, which is pretty wild. So it really summarized it up nicely as to what these entries entail, such as timestamp, city, home status, address, etc. That I think is a good first step for me, even though I knew what was in this data set, just having it kind of recapped, summarized nicely is a great way to start. Now let's get into the fun stuff. I have here, I created a prompt which says, make a bar chart of the top five homes in LA that are built after 2015 and are in the mid range of price options. So let's see what happens when I type this in here. The whole goal of this one is as someone who is shopping for real estate in LA, for example, they wanna see homes that are built after 2015 and aren't at the high end range of pricing, but also not the low end. Let's go, let's go mid here. Now, I really wanted to show you how you can create charts with in ChatGPT using our essentially our own real estate GPT through feeding it this data. What you can do is create these really good charts and then also see how they are built with Python, for example, how it's actually analyzing this data. This is a great way if you are learning about machine learning and really wanting to understand what's going on behind the scenes with Python, but also too, if you are someone who's more on the business side and want to present this data to maybe stakeholders or maybe to your clients, it is so easy to do now with AI, which is pretty incredible. Now I always get asked, is this going to take over jobs? Especially in this scenario, is this going to take over data analyst jobs or data scientist jobs? And absolutely not, we are so far from that. But why not lean into this tooling that exists and you can help you with analyzing different parts of data. So you can do bigger, bigger projects, bigger tasks at hand. Okay, so you can see here, I created this this or ChatGPT, I. I'm taking work credit for AI's work now. Uh, my prompt was make a bar chart of the top five homes in LA that are built after 2015 and are mid range in price. Now this, I'll be honest with you, this chart, I was gonna cut it from the video. I was like, it didn't really do what I wanted. The wording could have been clearer, but I thought we are close on this channel and I always include my mistakes or where I could have improved. So I'm doing it for this too. Why I didn't like this chart is a few reasons. One, it does not visualize what I was hoping it would in a great way. It's kind of ugly to be frank and it doesn't get across the data in a proper way. Also too, the pricing here is all jumbled. It just, AI did not AI here, but I think it's still interesting because what it will do is you can go to view analysis and you can see here the code uh, that was used in Python to create this chart. And I also like how it does a really good job of explaining each part of this code. So if you are someone who is learning Python or wanting to get more into the data space, machine learning space, it's so helpful. And I'm saying that because I am someone who's doing this exact same thing and using this analysis to understand as to what is going on. Okay, first we're filtering for LA and ensuring that the year built is after 2015 and going through um, you know, how they are finding the mid range in price homes, selecting the top five homes. This is gold when you are learning something new. It is literally walking you through it. And as long as you understand as to what it is doing, it is key. This also to what you can do when you are working with uh, different data sets, you can use ChatGPT to do your version of it before you use ChatGPT and then come back to ChatGPT if you get stuck and use it as a helper in this way. All right, but as you can see, this chart didn't really get to what I was hoping it would do. So what I did then was I created another prompt, which is create for me a pillar chart that shows the average cost of the top 10 most common zip codes and the average price of a two bedroom home. I mean, I need two bedrooms. I need one for me and I need one for my dogs. Maybe I need 20 bedrooms because I want 20 dogs. That's a different conversation. Anyways, not happening. But uh, as you can see here, this is what I was really looking for. So just a few tweaks in the wording, even from create for me a pillar chart, um, get more specific about what you're looking for, and there you go. So now it does a really nice summary as to what this pillar chart is showing. And then also too, if you go to this view analysis again, 
it will show you the Python code. So you can literally copy the code, input it into your IDE and build upon that. So whether it's, you know, you wanna use something like REPL, where it's you can just select a Python environment and start building, you wanna use any local IDE, whatever the case is, but you have this code you can really build upon. You can also do cool things like this. So say go copy code, and then let me zoom out here, put the code back into ChatGPT and go, can you, explain to me more about what this plotting is doing. Just using this as an example, if you're really wanting to understand what is going on and teach yourself more about Python at a quicker pace, quicker rate. All right, you can see here, so it explains exactly what was going on with plotting. And I stopped it after number two because it kept on giving me these like pages of answers, which is a good thing in the sense that if you're really wanting to understand everything, you can, or prompt it to be more specific. Uh, but you can see here, it talks about filtering data sets for two bedroom homes, and then also to finding the top 10 most common zip codes and how it did that. I mean, we always talk about technology or especially AI taking up our jobs or being a negative thing, but look what it is doing in these examples. We are literally learning because of AI and ChatGPT in particular. It's at such a faster rate. And I really believe if you are not someone who is learning in this way, meaning using these tools at your, what is it? Tools at your disposal, you're going to fall behind. And as we know, it's tech keeps on moving faster. So, do not fall behind. Oh, you know what the last thing we need to do is? I kind of showed you earlier, but we didn't really dive into it. What is the average home price for different zip codes? Can we talk about this zip code, 90019? The average price is almost $1.7 million. What is this zip code? Let's Google it. Here, one sec, let's go. 90019 zip code. Why are you so expensive? Very nice. Very nice. Let's see. Now let's go on Zillow where we're getting this data and see what these homes look like. I don't want my emails on here, so let me just take that away. Okay, you know, I could I could live here. I could get down with this. I don't know about the door though. Anyways, this is so cool. This data was literally coming from Zillow. We got it from Bright Data. We did not have to scrape a thing using this data set then to interact and learn with ChatGPT, AI, learn about Python, and now we can go build with Python and analyze further data, data sets that are given to us from Bright Data. It's kind of incredible, honestly. Sorry, I had a moment there. I was just thinking how I, the pain I went through when I was first learning to code without the help of AI and all these tools, probably a good thing, wow. People who are just starting to learn out these new technologies now, you have it so good. Take advantage of it, grow, learn. Okay, I love you all and I will see you all soon. Oh, most importantly, I linked Bright Data down below. So go check it out today. Go build something today, go play with it today. This is essential if you wanna stand out. I mean, the job market right now is so tough that one of the ways, the best ways that you can stand out is through side projects, showing you are building, creating different things, whether you're a technical or not, this is something you can do and will help you in your career. All right, I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone. Leave in the comments, what do you wanna build next?